Yo, what's up? Welcome, everybody. It's Sports Dad. Thank you for tuning in. Um, once again, I'm back and I'm in the building with more recruiting information and with more recruiting interviews with guys that actually had a hands on experience with this whole recruiting process thing. And so I got a special guest again today. Um, a great guy, um, former American football quarterback uh, who attended Orchard Lake St. Mary's and also who had a career at Penn State. And he also did some other things. And that's all I'm going to say right now. And I'm just going to bring in my guy right now. Ladies and gentlemen, Rob Bolden. What's up, Rob? What's up? What's up? What's up? Appreciate you having me, man. Thank you. No doubt. No doubt. Thanks for uh, thanks for taking time out of your schedule to uh, to chat with us today. And, um, you know, and to, to talk to talk to us a little bit. How's everything been going on with the pandemic and all this, you know, the protests and stuff been doing? man? How, how you been doing through all of this? I've been excellent. Um, it's been eye-opening for me um, outside of football and everything that I did do in my past. Um, currently, I work in financial services. So, like, that's, like, the main thing that has woke everybody up. <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. Uh, with the layoffs, with people being out of work and, and really realizing that, you know, they take it with a grain of salt when I said before the corona hit. <laughs> And now since yeah. the situation has happened, a real eye opener to say we probably should take a look at <laughs> getting our stuff in order. So <laughs> um, that's been eye opening. Um, but I'm glad that I'm in a position where I can actually help people and still, you know, figure out where they are and hit goals and, and do all that they need to do after this thing is over. So uh, it's been well for me. I've been Absolutely. Great. Awesome. Thank you. Awesome, man. Awesome. Awesome. Um, so glad to know you're doing well. And uh, you know what we do on, on this, you know, on this channel, whatnot. We we keep it strictly 100, talking about the whole recruiting process, uh, giving the good, good, the bad, and the ugly, to trying to help uh, young players and parents and set the proper expectations to put themselves in the position to be able to play at the next level if possible. Yeah. So you know, so why don't you? Why don't we start off and just jump right into it? Tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, so I was. Born and raised in Detroit, Michigan. Um, I got into football at age 12. That's when I started my first sport. I actually boxed, and somebody rocked me one time, and I was like, I don't think this is for me. <laughs> uh, so I did that about a week, and, <laughs> and I ended up leaving and going straight to the football field. Um, I always had wanted to be active. I didn't really know how or what way. Um, right. I got on the field and figured out that I just had natural talent with throwing the ball. My dad found that out pretty quick. He was always, you know, around and kind of helping me out through the process. Uh, so I started that 12, and I never stopped playing, really, um, all the way through Little League, all the way through high school, college. Um, that was my baby uh, for me. Um, wow. I played tight end my first year ever playing, and ever since then, that second year that I played, they figured out that that wasn't my position. Uh, so I was that quarterback then, but uh, attended major universities, Penn State, LSU. Um, I was blessed enough to pre be pretty good with navigating the um, recruiting process, and I had a lot of people around me who were helping me out with it as well. I know you know George Yardberry. He was a pretty big factor in my recruiting right. process. My father, he was very active with everything um, together and just kind of util utilizing our resources, we were able to pool, you know, some key people to be able to get me the exposure that I needed. Yeah. Uh, and that definitely helped out. So I ended up, you know, out of high school. Uh, it was a while ago, but I was a top whatever quarterback. I was ranked nationally. I had probably 50 offers. I could have went anywhere in the country to play. Uh, wow. That was only because of, you know, putting myself in a position when I was a freshman or a sophomore or whatever um, to kind of have those opportunities. So um, play, you know, all the way through. Uh, anybody who's listening knows what happened at Penn State when things happened. I was there in the midst of all of that. Uh, right, 2010, right. Wow. Uh, 2010 and 2012, because of that situation, I ended up leaving. I transferred, went to LSU, played there for a while. Uh, so I've kind of been around. I've had different coaches, different personalities, um, a lot of star players who are now in the NFL. Like, I've been able to, you know, pick their brains and see uh, different perspectives and way, ways of the game. So, um, it's been right. a blessing. And all of that, really, I would tell any young player, 
set me up, all the lessons, all of the experiences that right. set me up for what I was going to be doing after football. <laughs> um, right, so right. It was a benefit for, for the field, obviously, but even longer, you know, we still got a lot of time that we going to be here on earth that we don't strap the cleats up, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Did a lot. And uh, and I know you just getting started, you know, um, but talk about I got a couple questions. So talk about how the recruiting process was back then versus right now. Uh, social media wasn't as prevalent um, with mm -hmm. social media. It's a lot more to offer, a lot more exposure uh, for kids to really get themselves out there. Uh, for me, I know. When you're young, you don't necessarily understand <laughs> what's right. happening. But I remember we'd hop in the car. My dad was driving to Tennessee. He was driving to Ohio. We were sitting all the one-day camps. We were hitting every single thing that we could. Um, wow. Way back then, George George had, uh, when he was first getting started with, it was then called Michigan Elite. Mm -hmm. uh, he did his first camp in Indiana at the Coach Stadium. It was only four. I was a freshman but I was the only freshman on the field at the time. So I came in and was, like, throwing the ball to all these older guys and having all of these great plays and this and that. Um, and that, off the rip, they're like, who is this kid? <laughs> uh, so that whole process was, was like, great. Um, I remember my dad traveling, you know, going down to Tennessee. We just hitting all the one days. We hitting this. We hitting that. Um, literally anything that will give me an opportunity to kind of showcase what right. I was able to do, uh, as well as leveraging the people who were around me, like George, where I could take advantage of a camp. Um, he was doing a lot of articles and stuff like that, like literally just kind of just putting it all together at one time. Wow. So you said so you said you had like a you said you had like fifty offers. Um, when did those offers start kicking in? Like, when did when did they start kicking in for you? The recruiting process for me, uh, it was literally you know sophomore year. I hit Central Michigan. That was my first one day that I did, and I went in there and I killed it. I blew it up, and uh, I forget who the coach was at the time, but I got to talk to him afterwards, and he wanted to just have a conversation. Uh, and after that, literally, he offered me like the same day. And after that one, <laughs> after that one camp, after I left there, uh -huh. literally everybody started just hitting me up and throwing offers. So it only took one to kind of blow the roof off of it. But that was the first one, though. Wow. So, wow. so um, when you start receiving all those offers, like, how how did that feel? Like, you know sophomore and then you know going into your junior year how did that how did that feel as a as a young kid and how did you handle that? um it was it was it was a lot of fun i know that um because <laughs> you know if you throwing touchdowns and stuff obviously that's one thing but once the the notoriety comes people start knowing your name for what you're doing on the field um it was a lot to handle i think for myself it was a lot easier because of where i come from so <laughs> My dad is military. He's like, you know, a super humble dude uh, and does a lot of things for a lot of people. He kind of instilled some of the same stuff that he was all about within me. So especially with going to the school that I went to, which was Orchard Lake, right. uh, I stayed on campus, like, you know, leading up to that point to where all the offers came. Like, it was just easy for me to kind of – I knew – it's almost like I knew it was going to happen, right? So – um, wow. When it started happening, I was just ready for it. And I just stayed focused and kept pushing after it. And it all worked out. So why Penn State? What made you select um, Penn State? So I was actually supposed to – I ruled it down to – it was Penn State. I believe it was uh, Northwestern. And mm -hmm. it was somebody else I don't remember. But when I ruled it down, I was supposed to take like a – official visit to Oregon. It ended up not working out. I didn't go. And um, just on the one-day visits and some official visits, I did my official to Penn. I was just comfortable. The coaches were very forthcoming. Uh, they were honest. 
Um, and, and another part to, you know, this whole process was just asking all the right questions, right? So, like, right. as a kid, the kid may not necessarily know at that point, being young, how to read people, you know, how to ask the right questions, how to be direct and all of that stuff. So the support comes from the parent, obviously. So uh, going through that whole process and talking directly to coaches and asking all of the right questions, they just answered them more than that, more correct than right. anybody else. And I felt comfortable with not only the staff, but um, the players as well. Like, I just knew I'd, I'd gel right in and, you know, be able to come in there and take the position, really, which was what my goal was. I ended up doing it. So um, the campus as a whole is a beautiful campus, man. I don't know if you state college is like the school makes the the town. <laughs> mm -hmm. So like when you're on campus, you know, everybody, if it's not Penn State football, then it's like, what else is there to do? <laughs> 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 so um, so it felt kind of like a, a little small community, really. So it just gelled the coaches, the players, everything just made sense. So I pulled the trigger on that one. Wow. Yeah, for sure. Like, I, I you know, I, and I can imagine at, at that time, man, you had all that coming at you and then, you know, playing for, you know, no uh, program like that, you know, that was huge. So, you know, it looks like you got there as a freshman, as a true freshman at that, beat out a couple quarterbacks, you know, um, and you won the starting position, huh? Yes, sir. Um, so the whole go, I got there, um, you know, how to, sometimes you're able to get there early. There was a quarterback right. who was there before I got there, um, and he had played the spring ball prior to. So I'm coming in pretty much kind of behind everybody that's in the quarterback room and having to figure right. it out. Uh, but I knew what to expect, man. You you get in a situation like that, you know, you got to put your head down. You got to talk. You got to be show people that you're able to lead. Mm -hmm. uh, and just do the right things, be a good person, <laughs> like all of those things right. matter when it comes to making a decision like that because ultimately the guy who's in charge, which was Joe Patano at the time, giving you the keys to his program. You're the, <laughs> you're the face right. of the program. You're the one that's making the decisions. You're calling the shots. I mean, it's a big deal. So to be able to, especially at that age, being young, um, coming to a situation like that where it's three other quarterbacks, four other quarterbacks in the room who know a lot more than I know at that time. Um, mm -hmm. That's no small feat <laughs> to do. Wow. Wow, man. That's uh, – wow. And, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, not, it's not common, you know, unless you got to be – you got to be real special, you know, to go into a college and beat out, you know, sophomores and, you know, other freshmen – that got recruited, you know, from, you know, different parts of the country to go ahead and win out a quarterback position. You got to be special. You know what I mean? So what was your mentality like? You know, talk about the mentality of just of of being a competitor and, you know, going in and saying, like, you know, I'm going to win that that starting QB spot. Uh, so, again, it, it, it had a lot to do with what I was doing prior to getting on campus. So as I was playing Little League, as I was playing high school, it was instilled in me that, you know, of course you go have practice. Of course you go have these things that happen that you have to do. But it's right. the stuff that outside of that, that's going to matter. <laughs> so yeah. uh, even in Little League, I remember, like, if I wasn't coming at first in the sprints, I'm a quarterback. I'm not supposed to be the fastest guy on the team, but that don't matter. <laughs> <laughs> like, if I wasn't coming at first in the sprints, like, I was jogging home, and I knew that. <laughs> right, you know, right. Like, it, was, it was like that where, you know, I was standing after practice, working on my three-step drop, my slants, my whatever, uh, and it was critiqued. It was, it was, it was coached, you know. I, I really right. made sure that the people who were coaching me were doing all that they could to – really raised my game. So if that was during practice, if that was before, if that was after, um, those were the times that I think kind of set me apart, really. Uh, so when I got to Penn, the mindset was the same. I didn't – it never changed. I got there. Um, I worked out. I did everything that I had to do. But it was the extra. I started hitting up my teammates, seeing what they was doing, um, holding them accountable. Hey, we need to get this together. We didn't look so good this week. Um, just kind of pulling – 
other people to even raise that game up because it's only going to make me better, right? Um, right. But that was the aspect where I think I had a lot of leeway um, just with them seeing me coming in and seeing that I'm serious and, like, trying to make this thing happen. Kind of right. put it uh, with the coaching staff as well as the players. Right. Talk about the um, – Talk about the the transfer aspect of it because yeah you you know as you alluded to earlier you know we all know it went down but talk about like you know because you had you you went you went to a couple you know a few places after that so how did it how did it feel when you were like transferring you know um, you know to different colleges um, so yeah it was it was kind of weird to be honest with moving schools um, even uh-huh. more weird just because of the situation that was happening at Penn. Um, right. Penn is a very loyal, like, uh, very, very loyal school. The fan base is very loyal. As long as you're there, it's no problem. Just talk about moving, it's a problem. <laughs> yeah. Um, dealing with the fan base and how they reacted to it, you know, you got a lot of slack there um, with people kind of messaging you and you shouldn't be doing this and doing that. Um, that was challenging, especially with being young and not necessarily having a mindset that was like concrete. <laughs> right, um, right. So that was that was pretty challenging, as well as you dealing with your team too. I've been with these guys for a year or two. I done you know been leading y'all and doing all of this kind of stuff and playing with you guys, and then that changes too. Now that we got a new coach, our coach has passed away. Like it was just, it was a lot <laughs> to say the yeah. least. Yeah. A lot to deal with from both sides, coaching staffs, uh, players, like everything. Just the campus vibe just kind of shifted. It was like a 180. Um, right. But, I mean, you do what's best for yourself. Everybody's not going to understand, you know, the decisions that you make. But you can do your best to try to explain it, whether they accept it. <laughs> That's right. on them. But, uh, but, yeah, it was it was a very, very weird time to be able to move schools and, and do all of that. So talk about now, like, you know, the, the recruiting process. Um, like, what do you, what do you want, what do you want uh, young players to know and, and, and parents? Like, what, what do you, what do you think they should know? And, and how could they put themselves in a better position? I think just for the, for the parents, I would say, you might lose some sleep. <laughs> you just got to accept that. You got to accept it because being able to, and I know it's not hard, or I know it's not, it, it is hard to travel right. and schedules and all of that kind of stuff. That stuff gets in the way, but, you know, it's almost like just doubling down for these four years of high school that we get, right? I mean, just right. go ahead and, and pour into what I got to do for my kid at this time. Um, so that he can take advantage of other opportunities. So during that time, I just – I definitely appreciate and am thankful that um, my father and my family was behind me in that aspect with not having an issue with driving to Tennessee, not having an issue driving. And, and like, I'm in the passenger side, knocked out. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm up there You've been driving eight, ten hours. Like, you definitely I, – I appreciated it at the time, but even more so now just because I actually realize it. So for the parents, I would say during those four years and even leading up to, um, you're going to have to ear hustle. You're going to have to, you know, make connections. You're going to have to put yourself in a position where you find people and let them know who you are and what you guys are doing and that your kid has talent. Um, and as they see that, you know, they, it's a familiar face, number one. And number two, you know, they see you and you can actually back it up by way of your play. You put yourself in a different space. Uh, for the kids, number one, the grades, of course. Um, I've seen a ton of kids who had a lot of talent but didn't necessarily do all that they could by way of right. the classroom. Um, and that's a, that's a huge deal um, just because, number one, it, it just shows your level of discipline. Like, mm-hmm. how often are you? You can thank the music. How often are you um, taking account for yourself? You know, like the kids, if they have a kid who 
is on top of his grades. He's on top of – he's a leader on the field. He's on top of everything. They're more likely to pull the trigger on that guy. Um, you have to have – like, if you have superior talent, right. you might be able to get away with it with the grades, but I wouldn't even risk it. Like, if you're doing both, it's a it's an automatic go. <laughs> They'll pull the trigger on it. You'll get all the offers and all that you deserve, really. Um, and just don't think that anybody owes you anything. It's another one as mm. well. Um, like I know people who have a ton of talent and think that they should be in a certain space, but they're not, you know, like nobody is, right. nobody is going to take you serious unless you do. And however serious you take yourself is how they'll perceive you. So, um, just stay on your game. That's on the field, that's off the field, stay out of trouble, don't be messing around with the girlies, like figure that out early um, and get yourself in a situation where you're just rocking and rolling on all levels. That's very attractive to a lot of coaches. Less headache. <laughs> wow. Wow, man, you just like took all my questions away, bro. <laughs> yeah, I was going to talk about that, you know what I'm saying, like um, – you know, t talk about, you know, how players should conduct themselves, you know, after they get to college, because, you know, you know, we see all the time, you know, on, on these, you know, ESPN, how these players get busted for doing certain things and, you know, and not, and that comes from not, you know, conducting themselves properly um, and not understanding that they're under that microscope. It's uh, definitely real, um, especially going to a school like a Penn State, like a LSU. It's a lot going on on campus, man. <laughs> it's a whole <laughs> lot happening uh, from the girls to the parties to – and a lot of times, like, I, I stayed at Orchard Lake. I was I was boarding there, so I was there all week, came home on the weekends. Um, so I was kind of used to being away from home. But right. for a lot of kids, going to the school outside of state, this is their first time being away ever. So when you have all of this freedom and now you've got all of these different things that you weren't doing before around you, it's easy to get distracted and lose what the actual goal is. So, um, you know, just before you even get there, just realize what it is. The parents, I would say, have these conversations with them. Find people who have been in those situations to, you know, by way of a mentor, like allow them to ask questions and get a feel for what they're going to be getting themselves into. Because, you know, when they get there, it's, it's on them. A lot of the parents right. may have that experience. They didn't go to a Penn State or something like that, so they wouldn't be able to talk about it. Uh, but other players, they can talk to and, and figure that stuff out or at least have some type of mental backing or background about what they are getting into right. so, rather than going in blind. Um, but, yeah, I, I would just say keep a clear mind. Uh, know exactly what you're there for. And don't lose track of it <laughs> at all. Um, so now, I, once you play this game and you in it, you, you always go be in it some type of way, <laughs> whether it's coaching or anything, really. Um, right. So um, I, I work with George uh, over at Power Five, and we do off-season training. So I work with the quarterbacks with him. Um, out in Commerce, uh, with COVID happening, we had to shut down for a while. But uh, right. now that we'll be back up and running since things seem to be opening back up. But it's once a week um, we meet up over there, and I work with all of the quarterbacks from, you know, footwork to just development overall in the position. Um, and I also start doing just sessions on my own uh, where quarterbacks can come in, quarterbacks and receivers, actually. Uh, we're going over. It's more personal. I like small groups just because I can know each kid and what they have going on and what they need to work on. Uh, mm. But I've been doing that probably the last last month. So um, just development in that point. And then I, I just know for myself that this game is, is, is a part of our lives. One thing with being in financial services that I know is that what I know now, I wish I knew way back then because I was getting a pill grant. <laughs> oh, man. Of, talk talk about it, bro. I was getting a lot of money <laughs> um, <laughs> by way of a pill grant that, you know, you give an 18-year-old kid a few thousand dollars, he has no idea what to do with it. He's going to blow it. 
So I right. bought all the clothes, I bought all the shoes, which I could have did, you know, Jacob. I had probably four grand my first month within being there. So, you know, that's wow. just a program that some schools are able to use. Um, and you can use it for anything. You don't have to pay it back. It's just a pill grant, it's yours. Uh, so with me knowing about investing now, I could have been in a better situation for sure. It's not something that broke me, of course, but I would have been right. a lot further ahead if I knew how to manage my money. Uh, but that's the thing now because things are changing with athletes. Uh, next year, they're ch uh, changing the rules so that these kids can start getting paid off their likeness, right? So they go start yeah. check, be able to do events, get paid in that fashion. So um, that's going to change drastically what's happening in the NCAA. Um, so uh, one thing I've been doing, a lot of obviously is on the field stuff, but outside of that, I've been working to come up with some type of curriculum that would kind of bring out um, in these kids what it is that they're good at outside of being on the field. We want you to dwell and be competent and great on the football field, but all outside of the field when the game over, I always talk about the transition. <laughs> like right. When it happens, like, what are you, who are you? What are you about to get into? What your life is? What are you going to look like? Um, right. And I didn't have that question question answered until football was over so they'd be way better away for their head if they knew that um and then afterwards it's a smooth transition into whatever it is that they choose so uh so you, by way of a curriculum by way of courses all of that kind of stuff um that's something that i'm kind of actively putting together to be able to uh put out for some of the kids in my city as well so it's not so you're saying it's not a bad thing if a kid, you know, um, has a backup plan, if you will, of, outside of, you know, football. I wouldn't say not at all. Even if I wouldn't even call it a backup plan. You just have to know who you are because <laughs> I started at 12 years old. So you talk about a kid playing a sport. I started at 12. Football becomes your identity. It's all that you know. It's all that you do. It's all that I want to play. Like I live, breathe, eat football now there's nothing wrong with that right but right, right. I have to understand that this game is only a very small portion of my life so what do i care about in that time like within the community you know what do i want to do what interests me um i didn't figure out that i was interested in finance until three years out of college right <laughs> if i had right. answered before then I'd start thinking along the lines of putting myself in position. I'm putting all my eggs in one basket by way of still looking to get to the league. But at the same time, I have a brand. I know who I am. Like, it's Rob Bowden packaged into this, this deal. Right. It's better for everybody. Uh, it's better for branding. It's better for your self-confidence because a lot of people struggle or a lot of athletes struggle after this game is done and, and not having that question answered. So, uh, some kids, you see them tuck their tail. <laughs> like, they think life is over just because the game is over. I'm like, bro, life is just starting. You, <laughs> you better right. figure it out. So, um, right, right. It's a lot of a lot of gray area with that when it comes to kids and, and how they go through this whole process. So, um, so why don't we finish up and and you and you tell us about you know um, how your career, how your how you um finished out with football um how do you how you finished out with football why don't we fi uh, finish out with that uh so i ended up one second i ended up um after everything was over with i ended up getting a very short run with the Lions. Mm -hmm. I was there for a pretty short amount of time, only a few months, really. Right. Um, it was a great experience. I got to uh, see what a, a professional program was all about. Um, I had that experience. It was something that I was planning on doing my whole life. Um, and just to be there with like a Lions uniform on was huge for me. Um, after that, um, you learn quickly that the league is is very cutthroat. 
Right. You got people being cut. You got people being moved around. People being injured. Like it's just a lot, a lot of moving parts. So, um, with that being said, I end up getting cut from the Lions, and I never really got into another team. Now, I had opportunities to go play indoor arena, um, mm -hmm. all of this kind of stuff. It wasn't really at that point. I don't think I was – I wasn't with it. It was kind of like a league or a bus <laughs> type deal. Right, right. Uh, so I wasn't really with it to, to – what I'd be getting to be out there and sacrificing my body. I'm like, I, I got to I gotta figure out what my next move is. So uh, – but that, that whole process, um, it was eye-opening again just to go mm -hmm. from literally all the levels, like starting from Pee Wee go through high school, you go through college, you go through NFL, NFL is the last stop. So if this don't work out, then you hanging it up. Like, it's over. <laughs> um, right. So that's when, that's when it all kind of clicked. Uh, and, and that was when I got into finance, really. Uh, it took me a while to get into it. But um, even still, I try to tie into the game and using that to kind of help people understand that the game – and all these lessons is only going to help you in your professional as well as your sports career. So, um, but yeah, to be able to get all levels was huge, but didn't really work out the way that I wanted it to, but everything happens for a reason. And I, I know I got so much exposure and just enlightenment period from, from all of the processes. So. Right. Right. Well, man, uh, you know, it's been, uh, it's been a pleasure uh, you know, chatting with you today. And uh, once again, uh, you know, I know you obviously, you know, busy dude. And it, it means a lot when you can take time out of your schedule and chat, chat with us and get the message out there. Talk to some young players and some and some parents, you know, and coaches, you know, um, you know, and just kind of share your story and and, uh, and what you actually went through. So we definitely appreciate you, man. And uh, thanks for being with us today, bro. appreciate those kind words brother i really do and hopefully we'll have you back on the show i'm gonna i got some i got some other things on my mind that i want to do so i'm definitely gonna have you back bro sounds good man thanks for thinking of me no doubt i appreciate you absolutely later